Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I um, hope you had a good evening last night. Sorry, I kind of conked out a little early, but it was great seeing everybody that I got a chance to see. I want to thank Hunter's Hope for putting this together every year. It, it, it really, you guys don't know, but you inspire us to do this stuff. You know, we we go back and we have more energy than you, and we just try to go to town to get stuff done. And it's um so, and we know the root of the root reasons we're doing this. And it's really, it really is, a, it just helps us keep going every day. We have to fight with government bureaucracies. We have to do all kinds of things to get stuff on a panel. But um, in the end, we, you know, everybody knows what we're doing it for. So appreciate your positive support. So what I'm gonna talk about is the Newborn Screening Council, and I can be pretty quick with this. Um, Dieter's laid down a lot of the groundwork with his excellent talk. So I'm gonna go through a lot of these slides quickly. I don't have very many slides. Now, the main goal of this council, which was formed in 2020, and is really rooted in the Hunter's Hope kind of scientific team that's been coming to the scientific meetings since the very beginning, is to make sure we're all on the same page with the information that's out there, keeping people up to date with the information. And as you can see it from when Dieter went through his slides, there's a lot of history that's out there. And a lot of the history actually leads to people get stuck in history. You know, they get they remember the bad things. And that's why I believe the rust by the on the second nomination, it didn't go through. There was a group of people that just had in their head the old news and not the new news. So the, the council really was meant to help people, new states who are coming on or have new cases to be able to review those cases. New York had 10 years worth of data that you know, was done the wrong way or not the best way, but in the end, it created an awful lot of information that is still useful today. And every, almost every call, I end up calling up my the New York State's database to kind of look at what's the history of somebody with this information. So these papers, it's kind of the history as well. Um, most of it was covered by Dieter, so I'm gonna skip it down to the, really the 2021 paper, which is um, Dr. Robert Stone. He is a Rochester hospital uh, physician and oversees a, is a neuro neurologist, childhood neuro or pediatric neurologist. So he was relatively new to newborn screening when he got into that place. And he always called me with lots of questions. And in the end, we, we needed a better way to communicate how, what do we do with these cases? How do we determine how to follow children? And that's a lot of what this Crab A Council does is review cases. When a state comes up and says, well, I've got a child, the enzyme activity is at a certain level. These are the mutations that were found. This is the psychocene. There's a group of us that have seen this enough times where we can say, well, you, you need to be really concerned about that. And hopefully the psychocene's over 10, they already know that and they're gonna be really concerned and get that child to care. Those are sort of the easy ones, but then there's the ones where we're looking at where they're between two and 10 in this kind of range where we people don't really know what to do. And that's what the council is gonna do. So current recommendations are if it's greater than 10 for psychocene, a state would should have in place a way to get those children to a, a, a treatment center as fast as possible. And that, that's something that needs, they need to be thinking about before it happens because you don't wanna be trying to scramble with, it's kind of like a fire drill, really think about it. Where, where, what are we gonna do if there's a fire? And when you got a child with really high psychocene, what are the physicians gonna tell that family? How are the, what's the latest information on how to, the therapies for that child? Um, if, what's the closest center for the family? What other centers could they work with to get that child in? That should all be rehearsed. So that's a big part of the Robert Stone's paper is emphasizing that. And then there's the group between two and 10 that I tell you, we, where are we look and we try to determine how best to follow that. Do you follow them lightly? Like there's only clinically indicated they would have some kind of follow-up or do you follow more frequently like every three or four months for, for the first couple of years? Now, Crab A, one of the things that's better about it, once you get past two, three, four years old, it becomes you know, much less worrisome disease. 
doesn't mean it's not something that needs to be to be concerned with. But so it helps though once you get to that point, and we try to make sure we get the families through that point. So these we talked about high risk and low risk pathways, and there's the different ways to follow. And then this I more or less have gone over, so I'm going to skip down and just say if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer.